Hello and welcome to the Warcraft Academy guide to playing a Frost Mage in patch 5.4. This guide is going to cover the basics of the rotation as well as some more advanced tips and later talk about stats and character customization. We're going to be focused primarily on doing as much damage as possible. Use the menu at the top of the screen to skip between sections. First of all, let's quickly run over how each of your spells work and how to use them correctly. As a Frost Mage, several of your spells can freeze the targets they hit, or act as if the target is frozen. This is important because your spells have a hugely increased critical strike chance against frozen targets thanks to the Shatter passive. Evocation is a cooldown that regenerates your mana over a channeled cast. When you use this, as long as you have the Invocation talent, you gain a buff that increases your spell damage by 15%, although you regenerate less mana. This lasts for one minute. Next, we'll go over your three Mage Bombs. Living Bomb, Frost Bomb, and Nether Tempest. Living Bomb places a debuff on the target that does fire damage over 12 seconds. When the effect ends or the target dies, it does AoE damage to all targets within 10 yards. You can only apply this to 3 targets or less. Nether Tempest also does damage over 12 seconds to a target, but each time it does damage, it also does half of that damage to another target within 10 yards. Frost Bomb places a debuff on the target that detonates after 4 seconds, doing heavy damage to all targets within 10 yards. Each of these Mage Bombs are talents, which means you can only have one of them in an encounter. Each of these effects has a chance to proc the Brain Freeze effect when they deal damage. This effect causes your next Frostfire Bolt to become instant cast, cost no mana, and act as if the target was frozen, allowing them to benefit from Shatter, making it much more likely to crit. Frostfire Bolt is only worth casting when you have this effect. It does damage to the target and slows them if they can be slowed. You have a few other spells that have special relationships with each other. Frost Bolt is your filler spell and does damage when cast. You can also use it to heal your water elemental, although this won't usually be needed. Frozen Orb is a 1 minute cooldown. It launches a frozen orb from your location towards the target, dealing constant damage to nearby enemies for 10 seconds. Each of these spells, Frostbolt, Frostfirebolt, and Frozen Orb, has a chance to grant you the Fingers of Frost effect every time they deal damage. Frozen Orb also gives you one Fingers of Frost proc guaranteed when it first reaches its target. Fingers of Frost causes your next Ice Lance or Deep Freeze to act as if the target were frozen, and increases the damage Ice Lance does in addition to that. You can have up to two Fingers of Frost procs at once, but if you get any more, they're wasted. By default, Ice Lance is an instant cast that does low damage, but against frozen targets it does four times as much damage and has a massively increased chance to crit, which is why Fingers of Frost makes this spell so powerful. Your Frost Bolt and Frost Fire Bolt can also proc your Mastery, Icicles. Every time Frost Bolt and Frost Fire Bolt deal damage, 16% of the damage done is stored as an Icicle that stays with you for 30 seconds. You can have up to five Icicles with you at once, but as soon as you obtain a sixth Icicle, one is immediately fired at the target to deal its damage. You can also use Ice Lance to fire them all at once. You don't really need to pay any attention to this since it all happens automatically. Moving on to your cooldowns, you have three major cooldowns that contribute to your rotation. Mirror Image is the weakest of these and summons three copies of yourself to attack for 30 seconds. Icy Veins increases your spell haste by 20% and prevents your cast from being slowed by damaging attacks. This effect lasts for 20 seconds, and Alter Time is an interesting effect that takes a snapshot of your current location, health, mana, buffs and debuffs, and then returns you to that position after 6 seconds or when used again. You can utilise this to extend powerful cooldowns and buffs for an extra 6 seconds by snapshotting them. Both Alter Time and Icy Veins have 3 minute cooldowns. For multiple targets, there are a few extra spells that get added into your rotation depending on the circumstances. Cone of Cold does damage to enemies in a cone in front of you and slows them. Arcane Explosion does damage to all targets around you every time you cast it. And Blizzard is a channeled spell that does constant damage in the targeted area and slows enemies it hits. Freeze is not technically an AoE spell. This is an ability your Water Elemental has. When used on targets, it freezes them, thus making them susceptible to the effects of Shatter. It also grants you a Fingers of Frost proc for each target hit by the freeze, although this is still capped at 2. You use this spell to get extra fingers of frost procs and to increase the crit chance of your spells via shatter. However, bosses are immune to freeze, so this spell only works against additional targets in the encounter that can be frozen. 
The frost rotation revolves around reacting to procs quickly as you get them. First of all, make sure you always have the frost armor buff active before you enter combat. Your main priority is to ensure that you always keep the invoker's energy buff up by casting a full evocation once every minute. Ideally, you should do this immediately after the previous buff expires, However, in realistic situations, you may end up recasting it in the final few seconds of the previous buff, since it's very important to maintain. Next, ensure that you're keeping your tier 5 talent up on the target, whether Living Bomb, Nether Tempest or Frost Bomb. We'll cover when to use each one later on, but for single targets you'll generally be using Living Bomb. Next, cast Frozen Orb on cooldown. When it first hits the target, you'll gain a Fingers of Frost proc, and it may also generate a second Fingers of Frost proc throughout its duration. Try to ensure that you use any Fingers of Frost procs you already have before using Frozen Orb, particularly against multiple targets. You can also use your Water Elemental's Freeze ability on cooldown, although as previously discussed, this is only worth doing if there are targets in the encounter that are susceptible to the freeze effect. Do be careful when you cast this though, as Frozen targets will turn and hit anyone in range of them if they're not able to reach the tank. Next, ensure to use any Brain Freeze procs you get by casting a Frostfire Bolt, this is higher priority than using your fingers of frost procs. In addition, if you have the tier 16 2 set bonus, you'll gain an additional buff after using your brain freeze procs called frozen thoughts. This buff causes your next ice lance, frost bolt, frost fire bolt or cone of cold to do bonus damage. For single target purposes, you don't really need to pay attention to this since it doesn't alter your priority list at all. Next, use ice lance whenever you get a fingers of frost proc. Again, it's extremely important to use both your Brain Freeze and your Fingers of Frost procs as quickly as possible when you get them, so make sure you're using an add-on like Weak Auras to track them more easily. Other than that, simply use Frost Bolt as your filler spell and continue to react to procs and cooldowns quickly as you get them. Now, outside of that, you also need to factor in your cooldown usage. Mirror Images is only a small DPS gain, so simply use this in place of Frost Bolt when it's available. It doesn't take priority over anything else. Icy Veins and Alter Time is slightly different. You want to use these two effects together in order to increase their benefits. Icy Veins should be used on cooldown as a priority. Once it's active, you can use Alter Time at any point to effectively give you an extra 6 seconds with Icy Veins up. Ideally, use Alter Time at a point during Icy Veins when you have other effects up too, such as Trinket Procs, Bloodlust or a Potion of the Jade Serpent. This way, Alter Time will extend those effects too. However, the latest you should use Alter Time is when Icy Veins has 6 seconds remaining. Now, that's the majority of your rotation covered, however, let's talk a bit about using your Tier 5 talents. In particular, Living Bomb and Nether Tempest. When running with either of these two spells, you'll generally want to refresh them in the last couple of seconds just before their final tick. This ensures that you don't clip the explosion effect of Living Bomb or cost yourself ticks of Nether Tempest. However, there are situations where you would want to reapply these effects earlier particularly when you have Intellect or Haste procs active such as your Trinkets, Time Warp or Tempest Reapit. You have to judge how much stronger these dots will be if you refresh them versus how long they have on the remaining target to decide if it's worth it. Generally, Haste procs are very worth of reapplying the dots for because faster ticks means more Brain Freeze procs. For Intellect procs with Living Bomb, ideally try and refresh it when you normally would just before the explosion if possible. However, if the proc will expire before that time, then refresh it early. Now, against multiple targets, your rotation differs slightly. Against two or more targets, take Nether Tempest as a talent if the targets will be close together, or Living Bomb if the targets are far apart. Simply apply whichever you're using to every target, and then maintain your single target rotation on the primary target. Against three or more targets, the same applies, but if you have the tier 16 2 set bonus, use your Frozen Thoughts procs on a Cone of Cold cast right after you use a Brain Freeze. Obviously, only do this if it will hit all three targets. Against 4 or more targets, do the same, but use Cone of Cold on cooldown even when you don't have the tier proc. Against 5 or more targets, it depends on the situation. If the targets will die within 5 seconds, use Frost Bomb if you have the talent, then use Frozen Orb and Cone of Cold on cooldown, and use Arcane Explosion as a filler. You can use Blizzard as a filler instead if you can't get into melee range. Don't bother to apply Living Bomb or Nether Tempest if you've taken those talents instead, as the targets will die too quickly. If the targets will live for around 10 seconds, do the same as above, but you can also apply Living Bomb to 3 targets if you've taken that instead of Frost Bomb. Only apply it if you have haste procs such as Time Warp or Tempest Reapit. If the targets will live for more than 10 seconds, you can apply Living Bomb even without these procs. So with all that information in mind, here's how to open up in an encounter. 
first, cast Evocation roughly 5 or 6 seconds before the pull to get the Invoker's energy buff up. Next, use Mirror Images around 3 seconds before the boss is pulled, and a Potion of the Jade Serpent immediately after. Start casting a Frostbolt that's time to finish casting just as the boss is pulled. However, if you're using Frostbomb as a talent, you can precast that instead of Frostbolt. As soon as the boss is pulled, apply Living Bomb or Nether Tempest if you're using them. After that, cast Frostbolt until you get several procs. In particular, you're looking for Trinket procs and a Brain Freeze proc. Once you have them, or after a few seconds if you've been unlucky, use Icy Veins and any on-use effects such as Synapse Springs, cast Frozen Orb, and then as soon as it hits the target and you get your first Ice Lance proc, use Alter Time. You can now use all of your procs and begin following your standard priority. As soon as Alter Time ends, you'll have all of your procs back to utilize again. This needs to happen in a relatively short span of time. Your Alter Time needs to occur when your initial trinket procs still have 6 seconds or more remaining. Moving on to your stat priorities, as a Frost Mage, Intellect is your primary stat and contributes the most towards your damage. After that, you need to be hit capped so that none of your spells miss, which is equal to 15% hit chance or 5100 rating. Next, Haste is your most important stat. Haste is strong because faster dot ticks and faster casts means you'll get more procs, which in turn means you'll do more damage. However, once you reach 14 242 haste, it's often better to stop stacking it and go for mastery instead. Stacking haste even past this point can be a small DPS increase, but you need to be very good at snapshotting your living bomb or nether tempest and reacting quickly to your procs when you get them. Crit is your worst stat and therefore lowest priority. As a result, these are the gems and enchants you should be using. In red slots, the best gem to use is the Wicked Vermilion Onyx, since Expertise directly contributes to the ward spell hit. This allows you to reforge out of hit on your gear into more haste elsewhere. Once you get over the hit cap and can't reforge any lower, start using the Intellect Haste gems here instead. For glyphs, the three glyphs on the top row on screen now are the ones you'll be using most often. The other glyphs do have some value but are more situational choices. Glyph of Icy Veins changes the spell to a damage increase rather than a haste increase. This is mandatory at high levels of gear, since extreme amounts of haste will push your cast times below the global cooldown minimum. Glyph of Cone of Cold directly increases the damage it does and is therefore mandatory for any situation where you'll be using it. And Glyph of Splitting Ice causes your Ice Lance and Icicles to hit an extra target for 50% damage. This does nothing for single target, but it is extremely strong for fights with multiple targets. For a full description of the other glyphs, check out the written guide. Moving on to your talents, in the first tier you can choose between Blazing Speed or Ice Flows. Both are perfectly viable, it depends entirely on your personal preference as to which you use. Ice Flows is useful if you need to frequently move short distances and want the ability to cast whilst moving, whilst Blazing Speed is useful if you need to move a large distance in a short time. In the second tier, Temporal Shield should always be taken. It's the best defensive tool out of the three, hands down, and it's also off the global cooldown so you can use it without lowering your DPS. In the third tier, Ring of Frost is a good default talent to go to since a few creative raid strategies can make use of it, but occasionally you might find use for the stun from the Frost Jaw and Deep Freeze combo instead. In the fourth tier, you can choose between Cauterize or Greater Invisibility. Cauterize provides a nice safety net if you make a mistake, whereas Greater Invisibility is a stronger defensive cooldown as long as you can use it in advance. In the 5th tier, you choose between Nether Tempest, Living Bomb or Frost Bomb. We covered this in detail in the DPS and Rotation section, but generally you want to take Living Bomb for single target or for fights where targets are spread far apart, and take Nether Tempest for fights where the targets are close enough to cleave. Take Frost Bomb on encounters where its AoE damage will make up a significant portion of your damage, such as Immersius Heroic or Galacris. Finally, in tier 6 you always take Invocation. As you stack haste by default, the Evocation cast is quite short, and as a result it's a good talent choice, as it gives you the freedom and mobility to not have to worry as much about your positioning. Finally, your gear decisions. You should select gear based upon it having your key stats, haste and mastery. The gear on screen now shouldn't completely decide what gear you pick up, but it's a good point to aim for. In terms of trinkets, the Immersius Trinket and Cardris's Toxic Totem are great for Frost and should be the ones you aim for, but the Garrosh Trinket is also fairly decent and is a viable alternative if you can't get both of these. 
Thanks very much for watching this guide. If you have any comments or suggestions, post them below or email us. And if you're interested in being coached by a top frost mage, click on screen for more information.